So, let me start off by saying, I don't know where else to post this. I've already asked all the forums I can find that are dedicated to this kind of thing. And, as of yet, no one has been able to explain what happened to me and my dog, Kuka. I did get this one weird reply back from an angel fire site made in the late 90s. I found it by chance. Someone had linked it on the 44th page of a wilderness forum I found through a paranormal subreddit. It was in a thread where outdoorsy people shared stories about their strange encounters in the wild. The angel fire site was simple, really just one seemingly endless scrolling page, and as I snooped around, I saw what looked like a 2018 copyright sign written in MS Paint on the header of the site. The header was a black bar with what looked like an all-seeing eye badly drawn, again with paint over it. The eye was closed. I sat there reading the page for a good 30 minutes before realising there was just way, way too much to get through in one sitting. So I started to scroll and skim and grew more sceptical as I did. The site seemed to be written by someone with way too much time in their hands. It spoke of conspiracies and secret agencies and hidden bases across America, and as well as other phenomena. There was a rambling section about UFOs and USOs, which is where I found a few first-hand accounts the author had gathered about the Phoenix Lights. I read it, then quickly scrolled all the way down to the bottom of the page, noticing the last entry labelled September 2001. I scrolled back up, and saw that on the side of the site, just right under the header, was an option to contact the author. I hadn't seen it before. I figured it was worth a shot. So I typed up my experience into the little text box, entering my email address, and hit submit. Almost immediately, I got a response back. It was in a long string of zeros and ones, which I translated from binary to this. We see you. After the initial wave of shock, I realised that it was probably just someone messing with me. I mean, my story is... crazy. So they probably just thought I was trolling them and trolled me back. But then, the weirdest thing happened... As I clicked out of my email and back to the site, I realised the all-seeing eye wasn't closed anymore. It was open. I closed the site and sat in silence for a few minutes, fuming about the message I received, before deciding that I wanted to give whoever was trolling me a piece of my mind. I tried reopening my closed tab, but was taken to an error page. Confused, I retraced my steps back to the subreddit, then to the wilderness forum, where I clicked on the link again. This time, I was taken to an angel fire error page, saying that the site didn't exist. I remember saying out loud to myself, What the hell? But it didn't matter. The site was gone. Still, it gave me the necessary information I needed to keep reading up on those lights over Phoenix. But, no answers. I need answers. I want answers. Which is why I'm here. I don't know where else to turn. Please help me. I'll try to explain it the best I can. And I'll begin by asking my question again. Do any of you remember the Phoenix lights? Happened way back in the 90s, March 13th, 1997 to be exact. Pretty much the entirety of Phoenix, Arizona and then some saw these lights flying slowly, silently, over a ridiculously large vicinity. The object in question was described to be huge, at least a mile long with a string of these orangey greenish orbs of light that never wavered in brightness. Some people saw five lights 
with two lights following. Others saw the other two lights docking and undocking from a larger craft which was shaped like a triangle or a boomerang or a chevron. Over the course of a few hours, this object flew over the entire state of Arizona, leaving hundreds and hundreds of witnesses in its wake. Still, to this very day, the witnesses who saw the lights are looking for answers. They refuse to believe the government's official explanation that they were just flares from the local military base and claim that what they saw could not have been from this world, that it was otherworldly, unexplainable, impossible. They refuse to be mocked or silenced or defeated. Of course, I'm absolutely not an expert, and this is just a very simplistic description. But honestly, after seeing the stories on the Angel Fire site and looking into it a bit more, I realised that maybe, just maybe, I believe them. That the lights they saw were unexplainable, inexplicable. And I believe them because, well, I think I just saw the same thing. Except, it wasn't flying in the sky. No, it was gliding under the ocean. Here's what happened. I wanted to try my hand at some winter saltwater night fishing. So, I had taken my dog and set off towards Gardener's Bay, heading from the Peconic River, rounding Long Beach Point. I'd heard good things about how rewarding winter and night fishing could be, so I decided to combine them. I'd brought Kuka to keep me company. She's a Tamascan, so smart and willful and loyal. I've taken her out fishing before, so she was used to this, and well behaved in the winter. I had given her some little doggy boots with traction and strapped a durable, reflective vest over her, so I knew where she was at all times. Her collar added an extra layer of awareness since it jingled every time she moved. I wasn't really worried of Kuka falling or jumping overboard, but I still took every precaution. I just didn't want to lose her. I'll spare you the boring details and get straight to it. It was a little after 10 and I was getting ready to call it a night. I was looking over my shoulder for the familiar sweep of light from the Long Beach Bar lighthouse and pulling up anchor when I heard it. A gentle bubbling noise, like water beginning to boil. Kuka must have heard it too, because she uncurled herself from the blanket I had laid out for her and cocked her head to the left. I flicked my headlamp from red to bright and looked around. There was a thin stream of bubbles about 30 or so yards away from the stern. One big fish, I thought to myself, watching the stream grow bigger and more frenzied. And then it happened. As I watched, dim, circular lights began to blink on one by one under the ocean's surface. I couldn't really tell how deep they were, but they were huge. They came on perfectly, one after the other, with no delay, and were in the shape of an enormous V. I encountered seven orbs in total. I turned my headlamp off to see them better. They were orange and green and yellow and gaseous and glowed bright underneath the waves. I could just barely make out the black, triangular shape that connected them. And, I cannot stress enough how massive this thing, this triangle was. Not a mile long, but still huge, at least several football fields. As I watched, I realised that it was moving, slowly and silently underneath my boat, towards the open waters of the bay. I was leaning over the side, 
watching it move, not realizing that behind me, something was rising out of the water. I heard Kuka barking, but thought she was just spooked by the V underneath us. I didn't turn until she started to whimper. I regret that. At first, I didn't see anything. It was so dark, and my eyes hadn't fully adjusted from looking at those lights. I blinked, following Cougar's gaze. She was standing by the bow, her paws propped up on the side of the boat, looking up. I looked up too, and there it was. This long, undulating, cylindrical thing, rising out of the water. I couldn't tell if it was mechanical or organic until it started, and there's no other word for it. Moaning. Like a human would if they were in pain, or maybe even pleasure. Kuka was going ballistic. I flicked my headlamp back on to see it better. It looked like it was made from some ever-moving shiny substance, like tar or black paint, and I watched, horrified, as faces, human faces, began taking shape in the blackness. It was like there were hundreds of people inside it, fighting to get out. An arm, coated in black goo and dripping, reached out from the cylinder thing and snatched at Kuka's vest, then began to pull, hard. Kuka screamed, and I yelled before running forward and lunged at her. I got a good grip on her collar and pulled back. But, it was strong, and Kuka's collar was sliding from her neck. Suddenly, there was a loud, foghorn-sounding blast. It sounded like it was coming from underneath the ocean, and the thing let off an angry, fearful sort of yelp, then gave a sharp tug. My elbow connected hard with the side of the boat, and there was a loud crack, followed by an immediate pain. I screamed and let go, watching that thing pull Kuka into the blackness below, disappearing completely. Sobbing, I stood, staring into the ocean, trying to ignore my broken arm. The thing had vanished without so much as a splash. Kuka's collar floated nearby for a moment before sinking into the waters. She was gone. There was another blast of sound, followed by a blinding light that lit up the area around me, and I felt myself falling. The last thing I remember seeing was the ocean rising. Right before I hit the deck, I remember realizing that the ocean wasn't rising at all. The thing underneath was. I woke up, sopping and freezing and disoriented, with someone yelling into my face. It was the Coast Guard. I had run aground along the beach of the Orient Beach State Park. Nearly an hour had passed since I blacked out. I'm surprised I didn't die. I told them what happened, and they took me to the hospital and told me the cops would be with me shortly. I told the cops what happened, and they slapped me with a hefty fine, accusing me of killing Kuka myself, took away my boating license, then had me meet with a psychiatrist. I told the psychiatrist what happened, and she looked at me with sad, misunderstanding eyes, and gave me some pills, and told me to get some sleep and relax. But I can't. I want to know what happened to Kuka. I want her back. I didn't kill my dog. I love her. I'm not crazy. I saw something crazy. But no one believes me. After some searching online, I realized what I saw fit the description of the object that caused the phoenix lights almost exactly. 
But what the hell was that thing? That goopy, moaning, screaming mess that took my dog. Is she dead? Will I ever see her again? I just want to know. Please. Please help me.